Hi everyone, today is Tuesday, September 25, and uh, today's video is actually going to be about um, the importance of ethics, and um, you know, to the sisters out there, please do get involved in this thing called academic um, research and the development of intellectual capital because it's cr it's truly amazing to see some of the bullshit that is done in um, for example a lot of things related to trying to capitalize on the development of a type of capital related to intellectual stuff without having even some kind of um, purpose and this is the beautiful thing about USA Black Feminism is that it actually shows you how to connect back to um, some sense of authenticity in your core so that you can reproduce this stuff through um, you know discourses of various ranges and um, you know one of the things that I've been sort of reflecting on is how do I actually communicate how you even connect to the right type of ancestry because for example in the black community there's you know simply black shit and there's good blacks and what I mean by black shit is for example when we look at like um, the origins of this thing called um, violence related to slavery uh, there was a group of blacks that actually said it was okay to um, colonize the community, elements from the community, and align with um, Caucasians in England to start this system um, that became, you know, some kind of infrastructure uh, that dehumanized a lot in the black community. Um, so. I uh, was reflecting on that and, <coughs> excuse me, reflecting also on how do you actually communicate what ancestry to connect to because yes we connect to, you know, nature, we connect to black um, and the term black is um, a code word for uh, connecting back to culture and, um, you know, there's different little terms or whatever that we use but, uh, yeah, so I've just been reading some stuff about ethics, right? And um, one of the things that I use, for example, to inform my um, ancestral position is I don't look to Bible stuff. I don't, you know, look to the stuff written by the Western consciousness around how to, you know, dehumanize our own and this kind of nonsense. What I do is I actually look at what elements of nature have I been connected to? And from that I looked into, you know, um, there was two elements that I found myself, you know, always drawn to. And then from that I was able to connect to the work of um, this person by the name of uh, Maladoma, Patrice Somme. And um, he actually talks about a way to enrich your ancestral core but it is based in nature and it's based on authentic black and um, that's one of the angles that I actually chose to explore to understand um, you know reconnecting back to ancestry because for other people who are actually watching my videos and stuff a lot has been done to the black community to misinform them to say okay you know your ancestry is this tool that actually colonized the community and there's ways that we have to sort of connect different dots and um, you know these things come together once you have access to certain knowledges and um, for me I was able to access uh, authentic stuff that's based on nature and it's based on sort of a rhythm that um, makes sense uh, through USA black feminism so I was reading this uh, text by okay I'll show you this text it's by Linda to 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 he wise to he wise Smith um, I'll also type in the citation to the text from the video 
And um, the name of this text is uh, called Decolonizing Methodologies, Research and Indigenous Peoples. And I'll just show you the text here, if you can see it. And um, what it basically talks about, like I was just, um, well, this piece of it that I was looking at was how do you actually write proper ethics? How do you make sense of the th this thing called ethics? And how do you actually get um, perspectives from different community experiences with these very, very... I don't even know what to call them, but they're very disgusting researchers. There's ethical researchers and there's ones that need to be truly addressed in a more punitive way because their stuff is very, very, it's very, very hurtful. And, um, you know, this perspective is actually written from New Zealand and um, it's, it talks about the perspective um, and research material that has been developed by and from exploiting uh, the name of this community, the Maori community, M-A-R-O-I community in New Zealand. And the reason for me making this video is that, you know, I just want to encourage you to, you know, explore this thing called ethics. Ethics is basically just, um, some kind of guideline, some kind of, you know, direction. It gives you a sense of your purpose and um, also thought around the outcome of the um, stuff that you produce and distribute. And uh, just some of the things here, like for example, on page 118, um, they're saying that, uh, well, the author was saying that, um, you know, there's a lot of problems with even how the protocols related to ethics are written. And um, what happens towards the indigenous community is that these people say, oh, you know, they're legitimate according to certain, I don't know, ethics. But they actually don't write the culture into what they're doing. And how can they actually do that if they're not a part of the culture? And so it's very interesting to read um, how, for example, on page 18, there's uh, situations related to even um, informing legal, doc uh, legal doctrines um, and questioning the ethics behind that. Because if you're actually doing something, can you not begin to feel that something is not right with what you're doing? And if you have to actually come back to some kind of sense to say and be reminded that you're supposed to share, why and how do you actually deal with things like that is our perspective. And so, you know, I have to say it like that because I don't even know what these things are. And quite frankly, when you actually go and do research in the community, first of all, you have to, before you even make that decision, you have to do some kind of um, assessment as to, okay, what is my purpose here, you know? And if you're not a part of the community and you want to do research about this particular community, write about yourself and somehow connect that to, you know, your purpose as to why you're writing this stuff. Because one of the problems that um, I've seen in a lot of, geez, I guess 15, let me see, 15, over 15 years of, um, you know, just looking into like academic stuff is uh, there's no ethics, like there's no, there's no purpose. And the ethic actually connects back to your core. And um, a lot of stuff that is written to actually promote this notion around, you know, growth, big super size. I mean, things can blossom in a very beautiful way, but have some friggin' ethics. But some people don't even, obviously don't even have a core. And like I said, with the piece by Maladoma Somi, this is actually what works for me. And um, it also works for a lot of other people. But also question what works for you. Because for example, my element signs may be different from your signs, right? And um, 
you know, try and find stuff that connects to this and look for example authors that write um, write their cultural perspective, their ancestral perspective, their spirit perspective into their work. It is truly amazing to read some of the stuff that's done in, for example, research that's done on um, this particular indigenous community in New Zealand. And, um, for example, you know, on page 119, there's, you know, examples of all these different instruments that were used to try and say, people, be respectful, you know, address your pathological whiteness or the, the pathology of whiteness. Have some friggin' respect. And, you know, there's, like, charters related to, you know, um, things around uh, natural resources. There's um, charters around um, declaring what is meant by culture and intellectual property rights. Like, this is, this is just crazy stuff. And, you know, for me, it, it really brings out a lot of questions around what exactly is the purpose of all this stuff? Because, for example, research culture is very, very exciting. It's very, very, it's a way to blossom and it's a way to say, okay, you know what, um, certain things can be shared in a very beautiful, very magical way. And um, it's also good to read about the horrors so that you have a sense of, for example, um, how to not repeat, you know, problematic systems or not support, you know, problematic systems. And so reading into these, um, for example, versions of, like, ethical stuff is, is just really amazing. Like, on page 119, you know, one of the questions I had was, who exactly benefits from something called indigenous knowledge? And why does there have to be some kind of citation to say, well, you know what, direct descendants of indigenous descendants have to benefit from that? Like, in our culture, and our practice, and our spirituality, um, has nothing to do with religion, but uh, religion has informed um, positions related to including violence and patriarchy and um, system dehumanization. And um, it's very interesting to even see this. Like, you know, why do you even have to begin to say that? Like, for example, there's something called bread ideology, right? And make sure you cite your sources, say where you got that from. We get one piece of bread, right? That whole, that piece of bread feeds the entire parish. And you know what? Nobody suffers. Even if everybody gets a little piece, or it could be a piece of fish, or a piece of, you know, a piece of whatever, a little piece of food, right? Everybody gets a piece. And that's the thinking that we come from. Some of the stuff that I'm reading about, I'm like, what the hell is this stuff? I don't understand this, right? Because when you don't even begin to think like this, this stuff is very, very strange. And when you look at, for example, <coughs> excuse me, how black feminism talks about, you know, the supremacy of whiteness, um, another way to contextualize that is to talk about it as the pathological of whiteness. And, um, you know, you see all this, like page 119, take a look at all the different versions of declarations, you know, related to natural resources, related to cultural practices, related to um, universal associations, um, related to, you know, nature constructs, you know, like, even educational stuff, like, what, what the hell is all this, right? So, um, you know, take a look at this piece. It's, it's very interesting. On page 119, it also gives an example, <coughs> excuse me, of you know, how these researchers will actually take language components from certain indigenous communities and translate it in a way that it reflects values that are not from the um, indigenous perspective. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty slick. So, um, you know, uh, another nice thing about this uh, reading is that 
it also talks about balance um, on 120. How do you actually, page 120, sorry, how do you actually come to balance? And um, one way of connecting to balance, uh, it says, is to connect to the magic. And the, um, the uh, what's the word? I want to say mysticism, but, you know, just the vastness of the universe and, you know, the all the elements related to, you know, nature and, you know, um, and connect with that rhythm as a part of keeping balance and harmony. Um, so, yeah, take a reading of this. Um, Linda Ty Y Smith from pages 118 to 120. Very, very interesting stuff about the importance of ethics. And it's written from um, an indigenous um, perspective of the, um, you know, the experiences of the indigenous community in um, New Zealand. And the name of that indigenous community is the, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I'm saying these uh, properly, but Maori? M-A-R-O-I community in New Zealand. So I'll certainly put some more notes on the um, video. And thanks for listening, and your comments are certainly welcomed and appreciated, as always. Thank you.